All right, it has been a week, and I don't know if I have to remind you, but winter is coming. However, that was yesterday. Today, winter is here, and I have completed the rebuild on my snowblower, and let me tell you something, that was not that easy. And now, let's take a look at the TR-5. All right. So here's the thing. The TR-5 is like super awesome, but let's, let's hold it back a little bit and let's go in. Um, so the air, this airline that goes around here, let's get my pointer out. This airline that goes around here, on the prototype and in the photos, there are some things that hold it up. And I have thought about this and I have worked on this a bit and I have determined one thing because this air tank line is a wire as you can see if I put those two brackets in there they're gonna be the first things to break off they're just gonna break off and they're gonna go away and then and then it's gonna kinda of turn to crap as long as I don't do that Everything is good. I mean, I hate to not have them to look super cool. And we're not quite done with these air tank detailing. Because uh, right now, you can't see the strapping that good. That will be fixed when I uh, put on a little black wash over that. Okay. But if I put the uh, things that hold up the air tanks... They're just going to break off. And I kind of feel bad about not doing them, but they are just going to break off right away because this is a long wire. And it's not going to happen. So I'm gonna, we're going to leave it just like this. And, I, and believe me, I've already tried some stuff. Okay, the underframe has been ready for a while. Look at that. You see how we made that uh, filler gap? You know how I did that? I took a punch and punched it with my hammer. Okay, so now we've got this. Oh boy. Now that is nice. Our trucks are done, everything's done. Motor's ready. All we gotta do now, and, and it's shimmed and everything. So we're ready to roll on that. Now, I'm gonna give you a preview of something that comes next. Don't get too excited. Don't freak out. Here is a pristine, and I mean pristine, one of two DD40s that I have right here, right now, that are going to get a pair of these Johnson 283 motors, which are, well, these are the kinds of motors that you get in uh, cordless screwdrivers that have ridiculous torque, which these do. We've used them in the 10 shoulders before, but we're going to do this. We're going to go back to back, and we're going to put in DCC, DH126Ds from Digitrax. Put those in. Look how beautiful and pristine that is. Weird thing is, I don't know why they have these on here. Now, once upon a time, they connected these motors together, and then they disconnected them, and for whatever reason, uh, they, they left those on there. They, and I have another one just like this, and it also has them on there. They're pristine, never opened, awesome, but we're going to put these two Johnson 283s. Now, this is the biggest motor that I have that can actually fit inside a shell and it's only the DD40 and Tenshoto brass that these will fit in. They will they work nowhere else. They're one they're a single shaft. But I've wanted to do this for a while because they're super cool. Now you know Hercules, he's got two he's got two back to back face rippers in him, but these motors are bigger than that. And they're not as fast and they are not as, uh, they, they don't jump like Hercules' his uh, 
266 face rippers. But these guys, I'm going to do a thing on just making this power plant. But for now, I want you to see. Oh man, that guy looks good. We had to make new handrails and everything for him, but he looks good. And that right there, that power plant is what's coming up next.